This is my childhood superhero, Bullet Boy. Like any superhero, Bullet Boy has a bunch of villains. But because I made them as a kid, they're kinda bad. The worst defenders being these three. Their designs, unoriginal. Their powers, undefined. Their story, non-existent. So now, over 10 years later, we're gonna give these villains a full reboot. We're gonna take a look at each villain, update their design in my current drawing style, figure out what powers they have, and write them a story that could be in an actual comic. And by the end, we're gonna have three fully redesigned, revitalized villains, each with a unique method of challenging Bullet Boy. For those of you who've asked if Bullet Boy has a love interest, you might wanna stick around to the end of the video. Also, if you wanna build your own superhero universe or just wanna watch me build my own, subscribe so you don't miss any any upcoming videos like this one. Let's jump in to our first villain, Meat Crush, a heap of muscle set on, well, literally crushing Bullet Boy. The description I wrote for him years ago reads, Crush is the venom of Bullet Boy. He's big, mean, and in Josh's opinion, ugly. He's basically ruthless, scary, and most importantly for any villain, vengeful. You mean to tell me this guy's big, mean, ugly, ruthless, scary, and vengeful? Oh brother, this guy stinks! So even back then, I knew he looked way too much like Venom. So we're gonna find a way to fix that. Maybe we can give him a similar body type and really play up this idea that he's super eager to crush Bullet Boy. Because Crush is such a tank, it's hard to imagine him actually moving fast enough to get his hands on a hero with super speed. In a lot of ways, Bullet Boy and Crush are complete opposites. So I tried to think of ways for him to counter Bullet Boy's skill set. What if he didn't have to catch him? What if no matter how hard or fast Bullet Boy hits him, Crush is unaffected. In fact, what if the more damage he took, the more energy he'd gain? Almost as if, in this comic book logic sort of way, Crush turns kinetic energy into reinforced muscle. So in a worst case scenario, if Bullet Boy tired himself trying to beat Crush in hand-to-hand -hand combat and Crush managed to grab him, Bullet Boy would be trapped unable to budge. Then, with pressure equivalent to that of a hydraulic press, Crush could immediately subject him to several tons of force and destroy him, or anything for that matter. It'd be up to Bullet Boy to somehow subvert this main strength, or in this worst case scenario, find somehow to escape his grasp. Now, I did a lot of thinking about how Crush would appear in the story, which led me to think about these three villains as a whole. Let's say that the villains from my previous redesign video were primary threats during Bullet Boy or Josh's summer break. But now he's back in school, so I kind of decided that would be a great way to tie each villain into his story. My first idea was that Crush used to be one of Bullet Boy or Josh McKean's bullies, kind of like Flash Thompson, but I think I found a better way to flip things around. In his debut story, we discovered Crush was originally one of Bullet Boy's classmates, one of his best friends. Imagine Josh coming back to school after break, now full of himself from being a superhero all summer, and leaving his best friend behind. Seeing as they were pretty close, his friend immediately notices this change, and eventually discovers that Josh has superpowers. He eventually decides he's gonna get back at Josh, and challenge Bullet Boy one-on-one. -on -one. So he builds himself a massive, strength-enhancing suit and confronts Bullet Boy. Josh tries to talk him down, but he loses control and finds himself in a massive accident. His anger and jealousy, like the layers of cables and fibers engulfing him like a second skin, are now fused with him forever. I think Crush's new design maintains that over-the-top muscular build that remains in line with his original concept. There's a lot more to this origin story that I think would be best explained in a comic of its own, but I can already imagine the fights between Bullet Boy and Crush being very cool. Let's move on to villain number two. Meet Fear Factor, the horrifying master of Bullet Boy's worst nightmares. All right, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. The original drawing I have for Fear Factor is pretty much exactly a drawing of Joker from the 2004 Batman animated series, with some minor changes, of course, so we gotta fix that. I must have really thought back then that no one was ever going to see these. His old bio reads, Fear Factor is composed of only thoughts, mainly nightmares. He may not seem like a very harmful villain, but Fear Factor knows every fear that any individual may have. He tampers with someone's imagination and makes it the worst nightmare of their life. He often attacks the minds of people staying in hotels or largely populated areas. And that's all we have to work with. But since we know that he's the sadistic king of nightmares, we want to make him pretty scary, maybe even disorienting, taking sleep paralysis demon to the next level level. Since he's really only a figment of one's imagination and he's got no form to the outside world, I'm using something imperceivable like a microscopic pathogen as a 
starting place for his design. I don't know anything about science. So his powers are sort of like Scarecrow's fear toxin, only in this case, there's no Scarecrow. And instead of toxin, he attacks the mind only when the victim is asleep. Only then can Fear Factor access the unexpected minds of the individual and paralyze them with fear as they dream. But it doesn't stop there because with enough time, Fear Factor can manipulate his victims beyond their dreams, warping time to feel like an eternity, causing them to hallucinate and confuse their nightmares with reality. As the victim starts wandering through their dream world, they won't realize they're no longer in bed. They've just become unwilling soldiers of Fear Factor's army. Intoxicated by their greatest fear, Fear Factor can now control the population in an almost zombie-like state. So how does he gain this influence over people to begin with? My original character description specifies Fear Factor's tendency to attack the minds of people in largely populated areas, and because we know all these villains begin to attack Josh while he's in high school, I think I've got the perfect method. Imagine there's a new popular energy drink called Rush that's come to town. Everybody's talking about it, and when I say popular, I mean it's everywhere, a nationwide phenomenon. High school, at its worst, is all about fitting in and keeping up with the crowd, and eventually Josh gives in. At this point, nobody knew that drinking Rush was allowing Fear Factor to break through the blood-brain barrier and invade the minds of his victims. Later that night, he comes face to face with Fear Factor, who now knows not only Josh's greatest fears, but his identity as Bullet Boy. Fear Factor's new design is a massive step away from what I originally imagined for him. And now he truly stands out as something totally unique. And now that I've kind of reworked his powers, I've got a decent idea of how I would write a story with him. Let's move on to villain number three. In old stories I wrote, this villain goes by the name Diamond Tip. In another, she's called Sapphire. And in another, she goes by Dart. I think I'm gonna combine two of these names. Meet Diamond Dart, the dazzlingly dangerous superpower thief. And did I mention she's got a complicated relationship with Bullet Boy? In an unfinished comic from years ago, she actually teams up with Crush and other Bullet Boy villains against the Hero Assembly. But there aren't any details about her character or what her powers are, so I'm gonna take the opportunity to give her the biggest overhaul yet, while of course keeping her primary traits in mind. I think her new design should really incorporate a diamond motif, with colors that imply an opaqueness and translucency. I think we're also gonna shield her face, so that her identity is totally hidden. Because she never had any real powers, I had to find a creative way for Diamond Dart to pull off her heists without a trace, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bullet Boy or any other heroes that try and stop her. Diamond Dart can hit any superpowered individual with her diamond-shaped energy darts, and within seconds gain limited access to their powers. For example, if she aimed her dart at a hero like Bullet Boy with powers of super speed, she could just run away from the scene of a crime or avoid anyone trying to catch her. Stealing powers from a hero that could turn invisible would allow her to sneak in anywhere without being detected, and in most cases, probably frame that hero for the crime. But of course, she has to be careful, because early versions of this dark technology only borrows these powers for a short time. So if she doesn't use the ability quickly and efficiently, they will fade away. So how does her story connect with Bullet Boy? Diamond Dart's real identity also happens to be the new girl at Josh McKean's high school, where Josh inevitably bumps into her in the hallway between classes. For weeks after Josh met her, it seemed like anywhere he went, their paths would always cross. Eventually, they go out on a date, and like any teen with superpowers, Josh naively kind of totally spoils his his greatest secret, the fact that he has superpowers. Diamond Dart, however, plays her cards close to her chest and uses one of her energy darts to siphon his powers without his knowledge. I can imagine Josh then trying to show off his superpowers only for him to look like a total idiot, maybe even falling on his face. She jokingly teases him about trying to impress her with his lack of superpowers and suggests they meet up again later, leaving her just enough time to pull off her next crime with Bullet Boy's powers. I imagine Josh putting all of this together much later and having a confrontation with her at the scene of a crime where he learns her true identity and understandably feels very conflicted and betrayed. To make things even more complicated, she confesses that she has a good reason for stealing this money and that truly she does have feelings for him. But at the end of the day, it's up to Bullet Boy to decide where he draws the line as a hero. I think this totally remixed version of this original character really gives Diamond Dart a mysteriousness that will make her true identity all the more shocking for Bullet Boy. We now have three totally redesigned, rewritten villains ready to challenge Bullet Boy and make his job as a superhero incredibly difficult. The sad part is, I never got to make any comics with these villains. And with these redesigns, it feels like I'm kind of helping my younger self. The kid who wanted all these characters to be really cool and have their own stories told. Now, I'm one step closer to making that a reality. Now that I've redesigned all my villains and most my heroes, maybe it's time we do a roundup. All the big players, how they're connected, in one video. Let me know down in the comments below which of these villains was your favorite. Have you made any villains for your superheroes? Superheroes. Until next time, see ya.